Lesson 1.3, Transformation Golf, Sequences of Transformations. In this lesson, we'll decide which type of transformation will work to move one figure to another. This recording provides a brief overview of the lesson, and it should help students who were absent to understand the main ideas of our in-class exploration and discussion. Before we start with this lesson, there's some extra vocabulary that we should probably go over. Let's take a look at these six words and phrases. We'll start with the green words, transformation and sequence of transformations. We've already talked about three transformations. Here they are on the right. A reflection, you can see it in the arrows here. A translation, where we slide an arrow over. Or a rotation, where we turn the shape around. So far, we've really just been looking at one transformation at a time. Today, we'll talk about a sequence of transformations or putting together a few different transformations to get from the beginning to the end. So a set of translations might look like we see here. If we start with the purple triangle, we might begin our sequence with a translation and then finish our sequence with a reflection. You can see we've reflected this light blue triangle over a line of reflection to get to this pink one. And that set of transformations makes, it, makes the sequence. Our next words are pre-image and image. As we've done these transformations, we've had a starting image and what it looks like before we do anything to it, and then the final image after we've done the transformations. There's a special word for the before picture. It's called the pre-image pre and before mean the same thing. And after we're done with all the transformations, we call that final figure the image. Finally, when we talk about rotations, we'll use the words clockwise and counterclockwise to talk about the direction of the turn. Clockwise just means that I'm rotating in the same direction as one of the hands of a clock would turn. So if I take this minute hand, it would go from one to two to three on this clock in this direction to move forward in time. If I have a figure that I'm rotating clockwise, it's moving in the same direction as moving forward in time. Counterclockwise just means the opposite. If I'm looking at this minute hand and moving it counterclockwise, I'm moving it back in time. Similarly with this figure, if I start with uh, figure A and I want to rotate it counterclockwise, I'm moving it in this direction as if a minute hand is going back in time. So we'll see these six words and phrases in our lesson today. Let's go ahead and get started. We warmed up with this uh, slide in Desmos. Let's read through. In our previous lesson, we were introduced to three types of transformations, translations, or sliding a figure, rotations, or turning, and reflections, or flipping over. In this lesson, your goal is to use a sequence of transformations, so more than one, to transform a pre-image, that's the before picture, onto an image, that's the finished picture. Let's press play to see what we're talking about. I'm going to do it one more time, and you'll see two translations. There's the first, there's the second translation. We're just sliding things along. If we wanted to describe that sequence, we would describe each one of those transformations. So I can say that I'm going to use the vocabulary we talked about. The pre-image was translated. If we were to count, that would have been 10 units to the right. And then there was a second transformation. It was another translation. Translated. And if we were to count, that was eight units up. I'm gonna play it one more time and we'll talk about that sequence of transformations. There's our pre-image moving or translating 10 units to the right and then translating eight units up. So here's the same thing. And we're gonna use that same sequence of transformations to transform this pre-image onto the image, the before picture onto the after image. The way we did this in class was we used these three little buttons to describe how we wanted the figure to move. 
Now I'm going to have the first move be a translation, and I'll adjust the arrow on the grid to do the translation I want. So I'm just going to hook up this green circle with the lower right vertex of my L shape, and to move it 10 units to the right, let me make sure 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That lines it up with the same point on this figure here. I'm going to try it. Yep, there's my translation to the right. And for my sequence, I'm going to choose another transformation. We translated a second time, so I'm going to select this. And once again, I'm just going to put the green circle there and on the corresponding spot in the image and try it. And there it is, translating eight units up. So there's my sequence of transformations. Let's do it again. Use a sequence of transformations to transform the pre-image, that's before, that's the shaded one, onto the image. Well, this time, it looks like this one's not going to be a translation. Well, I guess it could be. You know what? I'm going to do a translation first. And I'm going to move this figure down. Move the pre-image down for my first transformation. And maybe you can tell what I'm going to do next. I'm going to flip it over. Remember, flips are called reflections. To do a reflection, you'll need to adjust this line of reflection on the grid. I need to show my letters where I want them to flip across. So there's my mirror, and I want this purple image to flip onto my final, uh, final image. And there's my sequence of transformations. I translated, and then for my second transformation, I reflected. Let's do one more so you can see how a rotation works with these buttons. This time I'm going to, let's uh, rotate it first. I'm going to take this pre-image, I'm going to select rotation, and I am going to just rotate it. And I have to say how much I want to rotate it. Do you want to turn it halfway around or 180 degrees? Do you want to turn it a quarter turn or 90 degrees? To get it to look like this figure, I'm going to rotate it halfway around, which is 180 degrees. And I can choose whether I want it to go counterclockwise or clockwise. For 180 degrees, it really doesn't matter. So there we have our rotation. From there, I can translate it. Now, we've just been translating... Um, horizontally and vertically, but we can go diagonally as well. There's more than one way to transform a figure. So there might not be just one answer, and that's what we found in class today. Here it says Anya completed this challenge by translating the pre-image up 10 units. So she moved this purple figure up, and then she rotated the figure 180 degrees. But there's another way to do this. I could just rotate it around that point right there and just pivot this whole thing up in one move. I could do a couple of reflections to make this work. So I can describe how I want to do this. I can rotate the, trying to use the vocabulary, pre-image. around the point shown on the grid. And now I'm invited to actually try that. So there's my point of rotation. I'm going to rotate it halfway around. So I'm not just spinning it in its spot. It's going to rotate on that pivot point. Let me try it. So I didn't even need a sequence for this. It doesn't So Anya did it one way but I was able to get the same transformation to happen with just one move. For the next few challenges, you're gonna be limited in what kinds of transformations you can use to see if you can pull this off. We're gonna solve this using a sequence of reflections, which seems a little weird because this doesn't look like a mirror image, but imagine doing a mirror image twice. So I'm going to 
reflect over this line of reflection, and then I'll do it a second time. So two reflections will get our figure back in the same direction as it was to begin with. I can do the same thing with rotations. I can solve this challenge using only rotations, as long as I do a couple of them. So let me start by rotating the figure about that center of rotation. I'll have to remember to change this to a half turn or 180 degrees. At 180 degrees, it doesn't matter if I go clockwise or counterclockwise. And then I'm going to rotate it again. I just have to select the right point for it to pivot about. And I have to change it to 180 degrees if I want it to move halfway around. So I was able to do this transformation with just two rotations. For this challenge, if we try to solve this challenge using only translations and rotations, we did a little bit of this in class, but I'm going to tell you right now, we had a hard time doing it. And the reason we had a hard time doing this was because it can't be done. We have to have some kind of reflection, or well, have to have a reflection to flip this over. There's no way to just flip it over a line of reflection by just rotating it. I mean, I suppose we could turn it, but that's not quite the same as flipping it so that it's faced in the um, opposite direction. So, spoiler alert, this wasn't possible. There were some more challenges that if you want to go back to Desmos and try on your own, they're really kind of fun. But to finish up, we discussed these questions. As I'm looking at these figures, how can you tell when a rotation might be useful in solving a transformation challenge? We answered these in class. A rotation might be useful when um, the figure is turned upside down. And a reflection might be useful when the figure looks flipped over. And sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between upside down and flipped over. They're not exactly the same thing. I should say turned upside down, just so we understand that turn and rotation go together. We thought about this in class to look through um, all that could apply. Could I move the pre-image to the image using only translations or these other options? Thinking through only translations, I can't flip a figure over with translations, so that wouldn't work. With only rotations, well, I can see that the figure is faced in the opposite direction, so I really need a reflection somewhere. I can do this with only reflections. I can't do it with a translation and rotation. I can do it with a reflection and a translation. So there's a couple of different ways to do this, but both of them require some kind of reflection because these are facing in opposite directions. Not just turned, but flipped. So in this lesson, we had to decide which type of transformation or what sequence of transformations would be needed to move one figure to another, to move a pre-image to its final image. I would really recommend that you go back to Desmos and try some of these on your own. I just gave a fast look at how it could be done, but you should think it through on your own. Have fun.